Now, Art Hindle never set out to be Mr. CanCon. Are you serious? But in addition to being in some big American pictures, like this one, Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Now, I'll take Dr. Kidner's word that Elizabeth is all right. Vaughn. Let's go. He has featured in a string of groundbreaking Canadian films, ones like Black Christmas, Porky's, for the longest time, by the way, the biggest moneymaker ever in Canadian film. I understand you tried to butt heads with Porky. Yeah, well, I'd have whipped him if he had for that share. And of course, Face Off, not the John Woo film starring Travolta and Cage. This one is about a small town Ontario kid who falls for a folk singer and earns a spot on the Toronto Maple Leaf. <laughs> The movie was made in 1971. Well, not only did people still want to play for the Leafs, but it was the first Canadian film with a million dollar budget and it helped pave the way for a new era. And it set Art on a path, one that had begun not in acting, but on Bay Street. See, Art was a stockbroker, a pretty successful one too, but inspired by the counterculture of the day, he packed it in and followed his passion. He's been in dozens of TV shows and movies since, and in 1990, won a Gemini for his work on the Canadian drama, EMG. These days, he is an outspoken advocate for the arts funding in Canada. This industry more than pays its way, and like every other industry, it must have the active support of the government. And a strong supporter of a Canadian star system. So, 40 years after our first million dollar movie, how do you inspire the next generation of Canadian talent? Please welcome to the show, Art Hindle. Hey, baby. How are you doing, man? <laughs> how are you doing? Very well, how are you? Oh. Welcome to the show. Oh, yeah, thanks for letting me be here. This is, this is the people that have sat in this chair, huh? Well, you belong in that chair, absolutely. Oh, uh, it shivers, for hair up the back of my neck. For many reasons, Art, but you're re-releasing re Face Off. It's got to be pretty cool. Ah, uh, 40 years ago, 1971, and uh, it premiered at a theater called the Carlton, which was 2,000 seats. Yeah. And uh, I remember I sat in Maple Leaf Gardens. They had a bar there, and they were going to pick me up there. I jumped in the limo with my co-star, Trudy, and uh, we started driving around the corner, and the limo broke down. And we had to push the limo up to the red carpet, get back in the car, <laughs> and then step out for the photographs. Man, you know? that is such a Canadian <laughs> premiere. <laughs> that is so Canadian. That was it. And then, and then the, there were so many interviews. Uh, people were interviewing me left and right. It was, it was a big thing back in... It was like your in, second no, movie, though. Wasn't it early in your career? Second movie, yeah. The first one was with the Satan's Choice. So right. I seemed to find myself in crowds of people that I don't know anything about their lifestyle. Now, I saw Face Off. I was... Uh, uh, Face Off, I didn't see it, obviously, when it first came out. But I actually first heard about uh, Face Off when I saw it on SCTV. SCTV, I think, at the time, was the cultural force that kind of parodied stuff. They did, And yeah. I first saw that. Let's play a clip if you haven't seen it. Here's a parody of... Face off from SCTV. Where are you going? Come on back, guys! Come on, you gotta play tough! You gotta give 100% or you'll never make it in the NHL! You gotta play tough, you gotta fight! Come on back! I like your style, kid. SCTV parodying the movie Face Off. So, so when they did it, what did you think when you first saw that? Uh, the parody? Yeah. Uh, tell you the truth, I didn't see it. If I'd seen it, I would have been really upset at John. You really? know, <laughs> uh, he told me about it, and uh, we did a film together called Speed Zone, mm -hmm. and uh, he never mentioned it. I think he was embarrassed, frankly. About the skit? Well, trying to trying to improve on Billy Duke, you know. Uh, it's the character you played. You know. See so if you can recognize this kid from a catalog a long time ago. Who's this guy here? Right behind you, Sears catalog. In that coat. Oh yeah. Yeah, Soft, who is that? pliable, um, smooth, creamed cowhide. How yeah. old were you in that picture? I was, uh, that would have been 68, 69. I was probably uh, 22, 20, uh, 24. I was 24. That's why I quit stockbroker. And, and uh, I went and got an agent. Yeah. I, I gave them, they wanted a resume. I didn't even know what a resume was, so I told them a whole bunch of lies. Yeah. <laughs> I, I worked a lot in San Diego, I told them, you know, because as a kid I visited San Diego a lot. And they said, oh, great, okay, we'll send you out to commercials. But hey, you could be a model. Because I was the perfect, I was size 40 and about 160 pounds in those days. Uh, and uh, I became Canada's top model for a while. That's all right, huh? Yeah, I was making <laughs> a ton of money. I was supporting my kids, so yeah. that's another reason my... My wife and fa uh, family didn't mind, you know. Yeah, that's right, because you were taking care of business. I was. I was doing a lot of commercials, a lot of a lot of modeling, you know. What did ENG mean to your career? 
Oh, ENG was, that was the most fun I've had in my whole acting career. We had five seasons, 96 episodes, and uh, every day we just looked forward to going to the set. People didn't want to go home at the end of the day. And even today, I walk, I, I, I find crew members and things like that. They come up to me and they say, Art, that was the best experience. We had, uh, we had child care. I had a golf hole rigged up next to my dressing room. Uh, we just had a ball. We just laughed for five seasons. It's also at a time, too, you know, even shows like ENG and Street Legal, Canadians weren't making shows like that. And it was really, they were, they were kind of... There were tentpole moments, weren't they, that we started to make shows like that? Yeah, you know why? Because the CRTC demanded that our Canadian broadcasters put product on the air. Now, CTV and Global have one hour of Canadian drama on their show a week yeah, it's insane, in prime right? time, maybe. And, and the CBC, to their credit, has a whole week of primetime Canadian-produced shows. And, and actually, CBC is ranked second in ratings to CTV's American shows. So I, I, I have my hat off to CBC. How do you get Canadians to watch the stuff? Is it, is it a question of getting them to watch that, the, that program, or is it just a long-term process to build these shows where every network will want to make them? Yeah, work? well, the, you know, they have to promote them. They have to promote them because we don't promote our Canadian actors. The, uh, the newsreel shows and things like that, they have the names of the, the people doing that show, but they, we don't promote our Canadian actors enough. But I'm not sure they do that in the States either. They don't say, you know, this guy in house. They just say house. Well, yeah, but the, at the beginning, they're promoting him, and they're, you know, they promote their actors quite heavily. They have what we, a star system. Yeah. Quebec has a star system. Yeah. Ontario, English Canada does not have a star system. Is that just because of the fact that, it's, you know, the English-speaking audience is just so easily influenced by what happens in other countries that we just, it's not part of our culture? Culture, that's a good question. Uh, I don't know what it is. I don't know why Canadians don't want to watch Canadian shows. I, I wish I knew the answer. Uh, we can do it really well. We have uh, Flashpoint mm -hmm. has been sold in the States. We have Rookie Blue, Canadian show, sold in the States. Eric has been sold all over the world. ENG was sold in about 60 foreign countries. Yeah. I've seen myself uh, dubbed in Japanese. So. How weird is that? <laughs> I could die happy now. <laughs> <laughs> what, I, what I think is interesting is the way we approach what's Canadian and what's not Canadian, right? I think a lot of times, I know with the Genie Awards, they focus on the, where the money, the, the movie was funded. But in actual fact, an Ivan Reitman film is a Canadian movie, and a Cronenberg film is a Canadian movie, even though it's not financed by Canadians. And there are lots of Canadians like Jim Carrey and Mike Myers that the Canadian star system is actually quite strong. Oh, it's huge. It's just how we... It's just how we choose to talk about it. It's huge. You know, I was looking up, uh, you know, I have a funny story about when I won my Gemini. Dave Foley, who'd won uh, for Kids in the Hall, comes up to me and he says, Mr. Hindle, and I said, call me Art, and he says, I owe this to you. I said, who are you and why do you owe this to me? I didn't know what Kids in the Hall was. And it turns out that he lived in Creemore, where when I moved to the States, I bought a house in Creemore because my kids had responded to living in a small town when I was doing Stratford. Mm -hmm. And so we moved them up to Stratford, uh, Creemore, and he was there. And I used to come back and visit my kids all the time, and go down to the ballpark, organize games and all that kind of stuff for all the kids. And Foley was one of the kids. And Foley was one of the kids. I didn't know. I don't remember. But he said that, that uh, immediacy made him realize that the entertainment business was this far away. Right. How'd that make and you that's feel? And that's how he credited me with it. Well, it, you know, yeah, it made me feel great, but uh, we need more of that. We need more of that. Well, and, uh, even though Canadians aren't, we don't do a great job promoting a lot of the stuff. That's one reason why we have this show is so we can promote Canadian art. Uh, a lot of people haven't had a chance to see Face Off because it was 40 years ago. So the 40th anniversary is out, special reissue, Blu-ray uh, on DVD. So it's pretty great. Thanks for coming in, man. Real pleasure. Oh, thanks for having me. Art Hindle, everybody. Anytime. We'll be right back.